my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam. Whenever we go through financial difficulty or hardship, we need to bear in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in absolute control. And we need to bear in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would not have left us without advice, without guidance, without instruction as to what to do in order to help ourselves. For indeed, al-malu malullah, the wealth actually belongs to Allah. When you came onto the earth, what did you have? You did not even have your clothing. Your parents or someone else had to clothe you. Thereafter, as you grew older, what happened? Perhaps there were days when yourself or your parents or those a little bit earlier could not afford a pair of shoes. Perhaps they could not afford a motor vehicle or a car, meaning or a house or even transport for that matter. There were days that that has happened. And when you leave, you will leave with nothing. Whatever clothing you have on you shall be removed and replaced with a shroud. Whatever wealth you have already, that which you spent, your name will be written next to it that you spent this money. That which you did not spend, others will be owning it or if not owning it, then they may even fight for it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not let that happen. I mean, so we know that at this moment in time in this country, we are going through such a difficult financial time or should I say such difficult times, whereas it's so tough to explain to someone who's not living it as to what is going on. We agree. You tell someone living in Singapore, for example, that, you know, we have something called bond notes. It might take you half an hour to explain. And even after that, they will not comprehend exactly what's happening. We are taught number one by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when you are going through hardship, difficulty, one of the first things you should do is thank Allah. Amazing. How many of us knew that? You have to be thankful. How can you tell me I'm going through hardship? I must say, oh Allah, thank you. How can you say that? That is what Allah says. Subhanallah, you want increase in goodness, you have to thank him. How, how can I thank Allah? I'm going through such a mess. I owe this one. I have to do this. I cannot afford that. I don't know where my food is going to come from. I don't know where my clothing is going to come from. I have no idea how I'm going to survive. My brain is totally, you know, stressed out completely. My whole system is struggling and suffering. My health is deteriorating and you're telling me to thank Allah. The answer is yes. That's what Allah says. If you are going to be thankful, we will grant you increase in goodness. And if you are going to be ungrateful, and because you are going through certain problems and issues, you forget the goodness that Allah has bestowed upon you. In that case, our punishment is quite severe. Allah says we can punish. We know may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. So the way that the Prophet sallallahu taught us to show gratitude is by looking at those who are suffering in a bigger way. Take a look at people across the globe. Suddenly they're driven out of their homes. You know, if we think we have a few potholes on the road because of the rain, take a look at those who have lost their lives because of floods. They've lost their property. Hundreds of thousands of people have lost so much across the globe. You would not be able to even go through a little bit of that. So Allah says, I'll let you get away with five potholes on your street. And that also we complain. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. So if you don't want the potholes, okay, we can fix up the road. But what if we decide to send a flood that will destroy your home and kill a few people? Astaghfirullah. Rather thank Allah to say, Ya Allah, we are fortunate. We still have a means to get through. We still have five potholes. Other places, they don't even have the road. Allahu Akbar. So this is the teaching of the Prophet Sallallahu Remember my brothers and sisters, we cannot stress it enough. Always look at those who are struggling more than you are. 
spend time to sit at, on in one place and to think about what's happening we read stories about people who've lost their homes whole cities like look at syria for example aleppo and so many other cities totally completely destroyed the hundreds of thousands and millions of people have no other means of survival besides thinking of jumping onto a makeshift boat to cross an ocean a few thousand kilometers have you ever even thought about that do you ever think subhanallah that your problem can be worse than that people with bombs raining all over them left right and center they don't know why they themselves have no understanding of why this is happening why me what did i do is it just because i am saying la ilaha illallah is it because i'm a muslim is it because the land i am living in has oil or has diamonds or has gold or something valuable under our feet what is the reason we don't know that's what they will tell you subhanallah but they are struggling when you look at their struggling you will realize what we are going through is nothing. You have a bond note. They don't even have a note. And they don't even have a bond. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So you have to, you have no option. One of the first steps of alleviating financial strife or struggle is to thank Allah. Oh Allah, I have. I have. What do I have? I have a lot. You've given me clothing. I've been used to buying new clothing every second year. I don't need that. I can have the same clothing for five years, 10 years. What's wrong? But when you start thinking that the lifestyle you've been living for such a while is no longer financially viable, feasible. And if that is your financial struggle, then my brother, my sister, you need to revise your understanding. There are people who don't have clothing. Recently, I was looking at the weather in some parts of the northern Middle East, Syria and so on. The amount of snow, the amount of cold weather, meaning the, the, the temperatures and people without clothing, people who barely have socks. And here we are with temperatures that are far higher than that. And we have the best of clothing. When I say best of clothing, the worst from amongst us has the best clothing compared to them. That's what it is. May Allah grant us the ability to thank him. The problem Wallah al -Azim, with us is we tend to just complain. Everything is a complaint. Everything is a problem. We want to live such a lavish lifestyle that it is so high in terms of financial demand. We cannot meet it, but we are complaining that we cannot live to that level. Why? This brings me to the second point. My brothers and sisters, in order to help yourselves and myself included going through this financial crisis, we have to learn to downgrade our lifestyle, whether you like it or not. You don't need the latest and the best. You don't need to eat out every day. You don't need to have a meal until you are full. Remember this. The sunnah is to only have one third of solid, one third of liquid, one third of air. Maybe your financial capacity might force you to adopt the sunnah. My brothers and sisters, it is a sunnah even if you had money. You're not supposed to be wasting. So downgrade your lifestyle. I'm being serious. Many people are complaining out of fresh air. I can't afford my son's school fees. Well, where do you send him? Well, the fees is $3,000 a term. My brother, there is another school down the road where it is $300. You cannot collect zakat of the community in order to oil the fact that you would like to live up to the Joneses. Not at all. It's wrong. And don't ever you dare complain about financial difficulty when you have not downgraded that. No, it's an embarrassment. Well, if you think it's an embarrassment, then suffer the consequences of not being human enough to lower your level. Lower it. Lower it. You don't need to live on such a high level. I know people may not agree. Wallahi, it is fact. You have to agree. You have to downgrade. There's no harm. You have to downgrade. If you are struggling financially, take a look at the few dollars that you can save. Sit down and write, where have I spent my money? Take a look. This is unnecessary. That is un You will be shocked at, at how much you can save. And then you will see there are others who are really struggling. They have nothing. Subhanallah. 
And they are still thanking Allah. They will be there. What did you eat, my brother? I had one avocado. Allahu Akbar. I've heard this with my own ears. And they are happy. They are at salah in the same masjid you are sitting in. Subhanallah. And they are so excited. And another person is so upset and angry because he used to go out to eat five times a week. And now he can only go out once a week. And for him, that is an issue. And for this man with an avocado, he's thanking Allah that he had one avocado. Where are we? This is why going back, the hadith says, look at those who have less than you. Wallahi, you will always find that you are way above most others, way above most others. We have such beautiful soil that we can grow our own fruits. A lot of us have our own fruits and veggies in our own gardens. How can you complain? You are lazy perhaps. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not let that happen to us. May we be from those who thank Allah and who downgrade, who look at others and who realize how fortunate we are. I do not have the time to go into specific examples, but I've given you one or two. And you need to look at people around you who are struggling. Listen to the news and you will see those who were in riches are today not even in rags. They don't even know where they're going to go. I met a brother in the UK who was from Syria and he was one of the wealthy people. He left on a boat, subhanallah. He left everything behind him. He owned almost a street, a whole street, everything gone. And his family was so divided that he did not know where members of his family were. And we think we have problems. Allahu Akbar. We think we have problems. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Thank Allah. I'm repeating again, point number one, when you have financial difficulty and any other difficulty, the first point you do, thank Allah. Many of us think, you know what? We would start, but not with thanking Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then thereafter, my brothers and sisters, seek the forgiveness of Allah. That is very important. Seek the forgiveness of Allah to ensure that what you're going through is not a punishment, but rather it is part of the test of Allah. Life is a test. You have to seek the forgiveness of Allah. Why? Because Allah says, وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ Allah will not punish them while they are seeking forgiveness. So if you are seeking forgiveness, even what was the punishment of Allah will be converted to a test. Seek the forgiveness of Allah. Look into where you have gone wrong. If I am struggling, I need to ask myself, what did I do? Did I eat interest? Did I usurp the wealth of someone? Did I cheat and steal? Did I harm someone? Did I hurt someone's feelings? Have I usurped the rights of someone? Did I swear, backbite? What wrong did I do? Search yourself, introspect. You have to. When you come to the ulama, they will tell you, no, my brother, don't worry. It's a test from Allah. Yes, that is their duty to tell you. But you need to know yourself, search your life. Seize that as an opportunity to become closer to Allah because we are taught that whenever you have a test and that test brings you closer to Allah, it was actually not a punishment. It was just a test. If I'm going through hardship and that hardship brings me into the masjid, wallahi, that was a test. That was a gift of Allah. But if I'm going through hardship and I start questioning Allah, that brings me to the next point. Never question Allah. Ask him, pray to him, make tawbah to him, thank him, but don't question him. Don't say, oh Allah, why me? Why you? There are others who have gone through more than you. Do you want us to give you something bigger? Do you want us to show you if we wanted to fix you, what exactly we would have done? Perhaps that can happen. So Allah says, don't say, why you? When you came on earth, your test, you came here to be tested. You, a test is like an examination paper. The questions on your paper were already set. You cannot change them. So stop saying, why you? These are your questions. These are your questions. Answer them to the best of your ability. Then you shall die and, and get the result of your examination. Simple. Why don't we look at it as that? We say as Muslims, we have come to this world or to the earth in order to be tested, right? We all believe that. The Quran says, and it's a fact. As you grow older, you realize how true that is. So if I were to go to school and to write a test, what happens? Can I, after the invigilators have handed out the papers in the exam room, and I look at the test and I say, hey, you know what? I don't know the answers here. Why me? Why me? Give me another one here. You cannot do that. You have to try your best, even if you don't know the answer. The most the invigilator will tell you is, listen, try and answer all questions. Don't leave anything blank. You, you may not know. 